Hi hey everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and I've been promising you for a while to show you how to make the no knead bread that I use. And it's really quite simple and it's definitely on the doofus report side. In other words, I'm not going to measure anything. Well, hardly anything. And just to show you just how simple it is. So here we go. The first thing I actually use uh, when I'm making it, I use um, a plastic um, shoebox type thing, which I pick up at Home Depot for next to nothing. And then the next thing I do, and this is going to freak some of you out, so just understand, it's that easy. I'm just going to huck in some flour. And yes, it's just regular flour, it's not anything fancy, it's just the regular flour. How much? About six cups. And if you don't know what six cups is, it doesn't really matter, about that much. Simple? Good. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is to get out a measure and to get out Some people have all this ready first, but this is the doofus cooking lesson, so therefore we don't have it ready. Okay, and to get out some uh, yeast, I'm going to do one tablespoon of yeast. And I'm just going to huck that in the center there. Now the two other things you normally have with bread, and that is salt. And because we are very artistic, we will have the pink salt, Himalayan pink salt. Doesn't really matter what you use. And we'll just have it. And it's about that much. And I'm going to put that down one end. So just a little bit of salt. And down the end, other end, I'm going to put some sugar. How much? Not that much. Ah, oh, come on, a bit more. Feeling generous. Now, I actually do like having some um, dry milk in mine, milk powder, so I'm going to just throw some of that on top. You can tell it's really important to me how much. <laughs> yeah, right. Now then, um, so what have we got? We've got sugar, we've got salt, we've got some milk powder. And we've got some yeast and flour. And really, I think that's all we need. Now, what most people hate about making bread is the um, gungy stuff of trying to knead it. So this is all that I do. I take uh, I've just got a couple of cups of water. And I just hook it in there. I take the back of a wooden spoon and I just mix it all up. Now the interesting thing about this is that it's about not perfection but about consistency. So I can see that this already is still probably going to be a little bit dry. Can you see that? It's it's mixing up, but it it's not mixing up easily. So we're going to give it some more water. And I'm only going to put half a cup in this time. And I'm just going to continue to mix it up. I've got a little bit of flour at the bottom there that I'd like to get rid of, so I'm just going to tip it up like this so any moisture can get out to the bottom because I see a bit more flour at the bottom there. don't want to waste any of it. And can you see what it looks like? It's sort of 
starting to ball together, but not into a perfect ball or anything. It's just, but it's fairly easy to move around now. And that is most of it done. Now the next thing you can do is cover it. And I like to use press and seal. It does such a good job. And all I do is just cover it lightly. You don't want to completely seal it off because you want the gases to be able to escape. So I'm just leaving a little air hole there. And I'm just going to put it to the side. I've got some baked potatoes uh, cooking in the oven. I'll come back in about an hour and that's it. I'll show you when I get back. Everybody, it's uh, about two hours later and I came back and this is how the dough looks like now. As you can see, it's sort of doubled in size. It's got a whole different consistency and you can see the bubbles and stuff in it, in the sides. And I'm just going to leave it now. I'm going to put it in the fridge. And then tomorrow, when I come back from work, I'll make some bread. I've got to admit, it's not what you call hard work. And tomorrow I'll show you what it looks like after you've baked it. Well, hello everybody, and it's now Monday. And I've just taken the dough out of the fridge. And as you can see, it's really bubbled up nicely. And I've got just like a casserole dish here. And all I'm going to do is grease it a little bit. Just use some leftover oil and put a little bit of flour in it. And the other thing I like to put in just a few oats. And I'm just going to around a bit. That's the bottom there. And now I've just got a wooden spatula and what I'm going to do is move the dough going to put a little bit of flour on top of it because this is the one time I am actually going to touch it. And the reason I need to touch it is because bread works really well, or bread dough works really well when it's under tension. So I am just going to take it and just knead it a little bit right there in the container. little sticky so I'm just going to add a little bit more flour, not very much. Just to, I'm just really just doing it so that it's uh, easy to knead. There we go, that's better. Feels good. Okay, so now I've got this sort of like mass <laughs> of dough and this is what I mean about putting it under tension. Do you see how I'm sort of stretching it. 
Now, if I wanted to make um, baguettes, I would just make them sort of like this bit long. But what I'm going to make is a round loaf. And I've just put the oats at the bottom there. I'm just going to cause a bit more tension there by doing that. And then you get to what I call the pretty bits. So a little bit of flour on top. Just spread it around. There's a reason for that. And then you take a sharp knife and you just score it like that. And where you've put the flour, as this continues to rise, it's going to sort of end up with two different colors. The color where the flour is put and then obviously it doesn't have any flour in the holes there. So it just makes it a different color. So I'm just going to leave that with a towel over it for a little while probably about half an hour. Uh, the oven I put on at 400, pretty high temperature. And as you can see, the, or oh, maybe not, but I just, where I put the oats at the bottom, it's already absorbing the oats in. So that's good. Good, so we'll come back in about half an hour and we'll see the next step. This is uh, about an hour later and I'm going to take the foil off. As you can see, the dough has spread itself very nicely um, into this casserole dish. And it's come up nicely. It's done that. And then what we're going to do... Laurie came to me and said, Don't you think it's time you got the bread out? And that's probably why. Um, she could smell it. <laughs> and wants to eat it. So I actually left it in for uh, 50 minutes, not 40. And this is what it looks like. Now when you've baked bread, the first thing you do is you tap it on the bottom. And if it sounds like that, it's good. The next thing we're gonna do is cover it up. And the reason to cover it up is because this hard crust, when you cover it up, the heat will soften it. So when you go to cut it, shortly, which Laurie is hoping will be shortly. <laughs> Actually, Laura, it should be just fine in about half an hour. And then we can, and Laurie's decided for dessert, she, she wants bread and apricot jam. Yeah. Apricot, I think you have to call it in this country. Okay, so everybody, that's the really difficult way to make bread, <laughs> the dear mama saw way. And uh, we'll have one last video. No, we won't. We'll put it up like this.